So I'm going to start. It's a bright light in my face, but fair play to that. So let me quickly check these. Fantastic. So hopefully you're all here for integrating Dynamics 365 for finance and operations with CDS to create accelerators through Canvas apps. The most catchy title I could come up with, and it really rolls off the tongue. Now, before we start, a big shout out to the sponsors, which are above, because without the sponsors, we wouldn't be able to do stuff like this. So fair play to them. So before I start, uh, who am I? My name is William Dorrington. I am obsessed with the Microsoft stack, and I think obsessed is the right way of placing it. I started in AX4, moved up to AX 2009, 2012, when then R3 came out, we started seeing something a bit more exciting. Then moved across to finance and operations, then CE, then, then Dynamics 365 for talent, then HR, then moved into the Power Platform stack. Uh, I've been working with that for quite a long time now. Uh, I contribute to the community a lot, so all the power addicts, the TDG stuff, it's anything to keep me away from home, basically. I'll go out there instead, otherwise I'll have to hang out with the family and stuff, it's weird. So, now I am head of the Power Platform for Hitachi Solutions Europe. Uh, if, that, if you're at all curious about anything we do there or opportunities, please just come and chat to me afterwards, but I won't bang on about that now. And I'm a massive lover of beer and coffee. Uh, don't mix the two together with me, but if you ever want to chat, you ever want a bit of a meeting, then 20 beers or at least 18 coffees, I'm your man. You can go over and chat. So if you want to follow me, uh, my LinkedIn is just there, but it's probably best you wait to hear what I say first before you start following me, because it could be a load of dribble coming out. So moving on from that, please remember that there is a, uh, a charity aspect to this, which is the, I hope I say it right, the Kilbride Hospice. Whatever we donate, Ben and Chrissa will match, meaning that Microsoft will then match their donations. So we have the potential of generating a lot of money for this hospice. So please go out there. Uh, Brett Rogers was manning the store at one point. I don't know who's there now, but even if you've got a couple of quid, that will then be extrapolated out to six quid and onwards. You know how maths works, so I'll, I'll leave that one there. So target audience, a weird place to start because you're already sitting here, but I want you to know what you're going to get from today. And there's a reason why I've done it in this way, which we'll come on to in a moment. So, non-technical. Really, it doesn't matter if you are technical because you'll understand it a lot more, but really I'm expecting you to have a lot of a technical background. I'm expecting you to be beginner to intermediate. When I've run these before, some say, well, that was quite advanced, but that's perceptive based. I also expect you to either be working with FNO, or maybe you've come from that citizen developer CE background where you're like, I can build apps, I'm used to the power platform, and now I've gone into FNO and what the hell is that? because I get that all the time. Hey, I can, build, I can build apps, I'll build one for FNO. Will, what is this data structure? I go, well, <laughs> you enjoy that. So, we'll hopefully be focused on Canvas apps and CDS today with that. And then I expect you to have at least a basic understanding of the different power platform components. You know, if you do have questions like what's the difference between Canvas apps and model-driven apps, etc., put your hand up at the end or reach me afterwards, I'll be happy to explain the difference. So, itinerary. We're going to do a high-level overview of the Power Platform in relation to finance and operations. We're going to address a common curiosity. We'll come on to what that is in just a moment. And we're going to build some stuff. I love a live demo because even when it goes wrong, you're still entertained because you can just laugh at me. So let's see what happens there. And on top of this, we're going to look at how do I pass records from uh, finance and operations to Canvas apps. And I've got some good updates on this as well that have yet to be announced, that will be announced today that I've been allowed to announce today. So some exciting news there. We're going to look at embedding Canvas apps, and we're going to then look at deploying a Canvas app, where we have some news there as well. So, last but not least, we're going to look at some current issues. And a few weeks ago, there was quite a long list of current issues. And then I got escalated to the product team. They're like, Will's been evangelizing the same presentation for the last two years, and it hasn't changed. And they said, OK, well, we're going to give you some stuff to announce today. And happy days, we'll be able to do that today as well. Just remind me as we go through. Let's quickly hit some apologies. For those who saw my LinkedIn post about uh, building out a nine grid matrix, I unfortunately won't be carrying through that today. I'll be showing you it, we can talk about it, but I realized to really build that, it was gonna take me at least two hours and we just don't have that time. So I can happily post that and ask any curiosities about it, but that won't be built today. It'd be another solution we build that's a bit quicker. And also, I talk incredibly fast, so apologies, but you know, you're gonna get two hours worth of information in 45 minutes. And I've managed to have my wisdom tooth kick off with me over the last two days, so I'm not drunk if I start slurring my words. I'm just in a little bit of pain. So, acknowledgements. 
The FNO team for Power Platform have been instrumental in some of the aspects of this over the last couple of weeks with the updates I've received for them. So, you know, they've said some items I can share because I've been really not moaning but saying, come on, there must be more to the FNO platform than just this when it comes to Power Apps. So they've released some stuff that I can start sharing with you guys now. So, let's begin. FNO and the Power Platform. How does it interact? So we look at model-driven apps. It really doesn't come into play with finance and operations because unless you integrate that data into the common data service, you can't use a model-driven app. A model-driven app is a component-based app and the components reside in the common data service. Thus, if you're not using the common data service, you can't build the model-driven app. And I would also say it goes against all the principles of user experience because they would have to come out of finance and operations to go into the model-driven app. And then there's been a lot of hearsay about well, won't you be able to embed model-driven apps soon? And the answer that I was given, although they said don't share it, <coughs> don't share it, um, is it's on the to-do list, but it's like the to-do list that's gone down the back of my wardrobe. You know, we've got so much more we need to focus on than getting model-driven apps into finance and operations. So there's the first one. Canvas apps. So no. <laughs> Canvas apps. Of course, we do have the finance and operations connector. So we can use... Canvas apps as a native connector for finance and operations. It can be embedded and you can do pass-through values. Now, an update on the pass-through values that I am allowed to share are they are working on the ability to pass multiple parameters now. So at the moment, when you go to embed a Canvas app, which we will do today, it says there's only one input. We are going to work on to actually moving that into a couple of inputs, which I think is actually quite fantastic for some of the more complex apps that we need to do. So you'd have to do loads of roundabout lookups just to get to where you want to be with the data. Very frustrating. Power Automate. As a functional consultant, this is always a fun one. You have to use the business events framework to use Power Automate. What's the business events framework? To those who don't know, it's really just a mechanism to allow other da uh, applications, databases, to know that an event has occurred, that you've updated a record, deleted a record, modified a record. Now, it can get quite messy because you have to use JSON payloads, etc., which for a functional consultant, they just think, as John said earlier, it's just a person called Jason, which makes no sense to them. So we don't see a ton of update here. And we, but another announcement that you may have been aware of if you look through the preview notes, we are going to get instant flows kicking off from Power Automate. So, and it's still called flows. Remember in Power Automate, you build flows. So we are going to have the ability to do selected record instant flows, which until now, what we've done or what you may have done is actually just built a Canvas app that allows you to select the record and then kick off a flow that way. Moving on from this, Power BI. As we all know, Power BI is part of the embedded out-of-the-box experience and actually is heavily relied on for a lot of the functionality within finance and operations reporting. Uh, it can be extended. You can build your own, build your own workspaces and embed it in tiles. Moving on from that, we have the common data service. Now, we can use the CDS with finance and operations. CDS is my favorite data platform to use. You can, of course, use Durite, your Power Platform Admin Center data integration aspects, which we'll be looking at today, and I'll tell you why we're looking at that instead of Durite. You can, of course, use Power Automate and Logic Apps. Now, there is a big piece of news on the common data service about where that's going with finance and operations that we'll come on to, and to me, that is the game changer for us, and that's where we're starting to see the shift with technology with regards to finance and operations and the future state of its data platform, which I will uh, discuss soon, and that will actually be available, I think, in October. So today, we are going to primarily be focusing on Canvas apps and the common data service. If you thought we're going to be focused on something else and you do have some questions, please ask those, because we can expand beyond this if we need to. So a common question I get a lot is, Will, I'm building out a Canvas app, where should I put the data? If I've got to extend an application, I've got to extend a data set that sits behind it to make sure this piece of function works, should I be doing it inside finance and operations, or should I be doing it inside the common data service? And I've seen some awful things happen with this, where suddenly a client is getting you know, an extra £4,000 worth of licenses a month because someone has built it in CDS and they didn't have any access to premium connectors, which was fantastic at that point. So, this is not... A CDS versus FNO discussion. This is observation and facts. Let's start with the common data service. You're, if you do use the common data service, your data will sit outside finance and operations. It's a given. And that's a lot of pushback that I've received from a few clients because it's just, they say, it has double the maintenance. So suddenly, you not only do you have to maintain your data and look after your data in FNO, you then have to look after it in CDS as well. 
you will notice there is a slight asterisk there where we're going to talk on to them, what I feel is quite an exciting development, and some of you may already be aware of it. Then it also requires integration. So it can be quite costly. As we all know and we'll see today, you can do very simple integration. You can say, hey, put my customers into the account record inside CDS and you know, have them all there, nice and simple. But it might get to a point where you go, actually, I only want the customers to be in there once they've reached a certain stage in their life cycle with the company. And then Power Query only really takes you so far there, and some of the other logic only takes you so far there. So you can get very costly when you start bringing in integration experts, which I'm sure we've all experienced. Integration and data migration have got to be the two most fun parts of any development inside finance and operations when you're doing a roller. Hi, Keith. So you've kind of seen this one before. <laughs> uh, similar but different. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's flexible and easy to build on. So, of course, when you do use the common data service, it is a lot quicker to build. We don't have to go through the fact that, hey, I want to spin up new tables, I've got to spin up new relationships and views and this sort of code-heavy or command-heavy way. It is a case of, hey, I want a new entity. Okay, I want a new field. I click new field. I name it, etc. I can create a relationship, a relationship A to C, job done. But we will see this today as we start building this out live. Who has actually used a common data service in here? Okay, so a, th a third. I really, really encourage you to go and use the, for those who haven't. It's so, so easy, and it will level you up in your career from making accelerators, and I assume that's probably one of the reasons why you've come to this. So, moving on from that. We will also see, uh, and this was more of a historic thing, that CC developers <laughs> and CE consultants sometimes naturally get aligned to building out Canvas apps and accelerators for finance and operations. So they will always go towards the CDS because they feel comfortable there. Like I said, they look at the data structure. I know you keep and I have many conversations about this. Of finance and operations, you go, what the hell is that? Bill? And we'll come on to that in a moment. But times are changing. So some of you might be part of a private preview already. And I got told I am allowed to talk about this, which is actually the, there's a, the new ability now that the finance and operations data entities are going to automatically sync to virtual entities in the common data service. I mean, we don't have to worry about that integration anymore because the data is automatically already going to be there. And it, that, that's humongous. I mean, you know, that, that's the point where I went, yes, this is where we need to get to. Now life becomes a lot easier. So you don't need to worry about all this integration. You can start just building out. And a gentleman named Sunil, who's in charge of this, has said, and don't quote me on this, this is what he said, don't shoot the messenger, in October, it will be generally available. So. Let's see, because at that point, then, I would just favor using the CDS every time. But hey, we can talk about that in a moment. Finance and operations. The data already sits inside finance and operations, and they are exposed via the connector as data entities. However, data entities aren't really easy to extend in that system developer frame, sort of frame set where you're actually saying, hey, I just want to click and point, point and click, click and point, point and click, job done, move on like you do in the CDS. It actually can be quite expensive. So what you're doing is, if you're not using the CDS and you're extending FNO, you're kind of replacing the cost that you would use for integration into actually extending finance and operations. And we're going to talk about that on the next slide, actually. So in conclusion, oh, wait a minute, limitations on the connector. Can anyone tell me the limitation on the finance not connector for Canvas apps? It's humongous. Who's used the FNO connector in Canvas apps? Okay, there's a huge... Pardon? Well, that's one huge one, yeah, but it's, it's worse than that. <laughs> so, pardon? No, no, it's not even down to delegation. It's, 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 they, they, they say it's a bug, and they're not sure how it got built in, but say you're building an, uh, an app within Canvas App, so you create your Canvas App, you've got an FNO connector in, and then you want, you want to bring in data from multiple entities. You can't. You, at this point in time, if you're using the latest update, you can't because for some reason, and they're not sure how, they do admit it's a bug. When you, you know the personalization of the users, when they can say, right, I've got access to four entities, but this is the one I, I want as my default, that will be your main filter, which madness. So we've had sort of canvas apps we need to build that do cross data across multiple entities, brings them in, mashes them up, and we can't. So it just only brings in that one entity. And you know, we, have, we have escalated this, and the answer is wait for virtual entities to come in which is fun, or actually start getting a bit more technical and bring different views in, bring data into one entity, and then that, once again, adds to the cost. In conclusion, it depends on the requirement. However, I would say by October, a lot of people are going to be favoring the CDS, so that's why I really want to start pushing it out there now from an FNO point of view for us all to get used to the common data service, because it's the easiest thing in the world, M mostly. <laughs>
So, let's just do a quick two minutes on data entities because a lot of people go, oh, yeah, FNO data is so awful. And I'm like, well, you should have tried it back in AX4, you know, when we had tables. So let's, let's chat about that just for a brief second. I'm sure I'm or getting you to suck eggs slightly here, but it's always good to do a bit of reminiscing. So the world wasn't always so straightforward. If a customer came to me and said, Will, I want all the information on my customer records, please. And go, Fantastic. Okay, what do you want? I said, do you want the uh, customer group? Well, yes, I want everything. Yeah, but do you want, do you want the name? Well, yes, everything will. Okay, phone number, email address, postal address, everything. I go, Christ. Okay, I've got to go and stitch about 57,000 tables together to get one few of my customer. And to be honest, although I complain, that's how a lot of us actually made our money, if we're very truthful to ourselves, that we knew the tables inside out. Did anyone ever use Atlas? What a tool, eh? That was like the original power app for me. You can download, load back up, mesh it around, fantastic. However, now if a client says, Will, I want all my customer information, I go, fantastic. Yeah, I can get you all the records in one go. I can just download this data entity. It's denormalized the structure. It's brought all those tables into one view. And for us, that was such a big deal when this first came out. And at the same time, I had a wave goodbye to Atlas because then they brought out the Excel loader as well. And I was like, this is not enough value anymore. I can use Power BI, the Excel loader, job done. So, but this brings limitations to app building via the FNO connector. Because although there are multiple data entities, there's still not enough of them. And normally, if I'm using the FNO connector, you know, at least a year ago when I really probably <coughs> used the FNO connector to build, it was more than likely that I'd have eight tenths of the data entities I needed, and then I'd have to ring up one of my technical gurus because I didn't quite figure out how to use the data entity wizard by then. So, rather frustrating. And it's not easy to extend. For functional consultants, it isn't easy to extend, mainly because of the cost. Visual Studio licenses, then you've got to know about the data entity wizard setup. That then creates entities as views and staging tables. And then, if it's never that easy. Once you've got to that point, you're like, well, I want some automatic actions or business rules to be applied to this, like I would do in CDS. But then you go, okay, well, you just got to use something called X++. It's simple. And you're like, it's uh, not as simple as they, as they let on. So, enough just me rambling on. Let's actually build something. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it goes well. So, I've kept it incredibly simple for the sake of time. What I'm trying to teach here is just a premise. Even though this app is very simple to build, it's, it's, it's just as simple to build most applications. And if you want to do a little bit of a hackathon or go something further with, with, with me building this sort of stuff, then we do run other community events around building more complex FNO solutions. And it is now actually duplicating something that already exists. So that is bad practice. You shouldn't do that. And that's actually one thing I would advise for anyone open a Power Platform practice. It's the first thing you should try and capture on any functional spec, because the amount of my consultants back in the day that would actually just duplicate functionality. And I go, they go, well, look at this app. I go, that's great, but why didn't you just use this workspace? They go, what? Brilliant. OK, how much did the client pay for that? Let's do a refund. You know, so that can happen. So you know, bad practice, but forgive me. And I am using the Power Platform admin uh, center for integration. And the reason why I'm doing that over dual right is because everybody should have access to use this. And moving forward, we probably won't have to do much integration anyway to a certain point. So it doesn't really matter if I use dual right uh, or, or, or Power Automate or whatever I want because it's just getting that data across so we can build the apps and CDS. But in the future, it will already be there. So to do today, yeah, we've got to build the data model. So we're going to start off with building out the common data service. Uh, but what we're actually going to be building is a way to store customer notes against, against finance and operations. So embed an app that dynamically can see the customer you're on, and so you can store notes against it and track the history of those notes. Now, we are going to build that in the common data service. We're going to make sure we have a customer data entity, and we're going to have a notes data entity. Now, I'm going to build both those out from scratch. And actually, for the educated ones on common data service, you go, Will, that's, that's the wrong thing to do because there's already an account entity. So I should be aligning it to the common data model. But I think just to really drum in how easy it is to build, I'd rather build out two entities instead of just one. We are also going to build the integration. So we're going to integrate finance and operations customers into the new customer entity in common data service live today. Always a risky one because this is, I've done this a few times and it has failed a couple. So let's see what it does today. And then we're actually going to build the Canvas app, which will be able to take information from the CDS and actually push that information back, but be exposed on finance and operations and pass parameters. So it's a nice little triangle of awesomeness there. So after that, we will actually deploy the application itself. So let's begin.
Now you just watch me, it's fantastic. So I'm gonna go and open up my browser, hoping I haven't left anything weird open. So the first thing we need to do is actually go and build out those entities. So I'm gonna click Scottish Summit, and I'm just gonna go to the Maker Experience. For those who haven't used the CDS, if you go to make.powerapps.com and try to build outside the default environment, if you're unsure what I mean by that, I can tell you where that is and why, and especially if you're using CDS, you won't be able to build inside the default environment anyway. And you go to data, and you go to entities, and this is where you can see all your entities for the common data service. I'm then gonna hit new. Now, the first one I need to build is that customer entity. Now, I'm just gonna put Dell there so I know to delete it later and it doesn't confuse me with some of the other stuff I'm doing. I'm gonna type in customers. Now I need to give it a, a primary field. I'm quite happy for the primary field of the customers to be the name, because this is what I'm gonna be using as a lookup. Not so much today, but maybe in future applications. And I'm gonna select create. Then from this, it's gonna start spinning up other fields, because what the common data model does, and actually some of the power behind it, is it knows through the years of experience Microsoft have been building applications, that there's certain entities that every decent data table structure should have, such, such as created on, modified on, modified by, created by. So you'll see that go in the background. Now from here, when I'm bringing across data from finance and operations, I'll want the customer account as well. So I'm just gonna quickly type that in. So I get the display name. This is a name that I'll see when I'm actually building apps. And I get the, the, the uh, name of the actual field itself. I can select the different data types. So I'm trying to slur and kicking in now. Uh, I can choose between numbers, uh, URLs, emails. And what this allows is a certain amount of validation. Once again, I don't have to tell it the validation here. It does it for me. It's a lot more user friendly than just going straight into SQL itself. Now I'm happy with text because as we know, number sequences can be alphanumeric inside finance and operations. So I'm gonna select done. Now I'm happy with this. I've got customer account and I've got name. I'm just gonna save that entity. And that's, that's it, that's the first entity built. Now we've done the customer entity. The other thing we need to build is the way that we're gonna capture the notes. So I'm gonna go and build another entity for the notes. New entity, I'm gonna call this delete notes. Once again, try and actually name it what it's gonna be so you, can, you understand what it is in the future because I've built solutions that, you know, after a few beers on the weekend, that's how fun I am. And uh, I go, what the hell is this? What, what's it for? So what we're gonna want for our lookup field is gonna have notes. Let's let create. Now from here, I'm gonna add a field. In the notes, I'm gonna to wanna to know the customer that the note uh, relates to. I'm gonna to wanna to know the customer account it relates to, and I'm also gonna to want to know uh, when it was created on. Now, we could do lookups here, but I'm actually gonna build from scratch and show you how to do some patching, because I think taking it back to basics for those who haven't done this before is the best way to start. So, we've got notes, we're gonna have name. That's gonna be text. We're gonna have customer account. and we need to have created on. But once I, I said earlier that actually it spins up fields in the background that relates to the common data model, and actually one of those is already created on, so I don't need to create that field. It's done the hard work for me. Hard work meaning clicking new field and typing in some words. So, from there, we've got our two entities. We've built them already. That was really easy to do. We now need to get some data in there. So the data we need is actually from finance and operations. I want to make sure I can get all these customers in the CDS ready to use them. So remember, this integration we're doing now, now, hopefully, is gonna be removed from us in about a year's time. You know, selling the dream here, I really am. But I, I, I believe them. They wouldn't lie to us. They've never lied to us before. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna to go to the uh, Power Platform Admin Center. And from here, I'm gonna start integrating. Now, I'd love to show you Dual Right, but the issue with this is I have done Dual Right demos before, and I have had people say to me, hey, Will, I can't access Dual Right because we need to get our admin to set it up, and they won't. I don't know why they won't, but they won't. So I'm like, well, that is a shame, and then I have to spend time with them showing them how to do other ways of integrating because I'm such a nice guy. So I thought I'd just cut straight to the chase on this one. Now, who's used the data integration within the admin center before? Okay, so five of, okay, so it's new to a lot, which is good. So th there's a couple of components to this. You have to create a connection set. So I've, here's one I created earlier because this can take a little while to process rather than anything else. But it's really simple. A connection set is pretty much saying, hey, what are we connecting? So you can use this integration framework to connect multiple different connections. But what we're actually using it for is finance and operations, 
common data service. So that's what we select. But then within finance and operations, as we all know, there's so many different environments that we may have. I mean, I work for a partner. I have a list of thousands of different finance and operations environments. So what I get to do is I choose the one that I want. So in this case, Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, then this pre-sales one environment, and then I choose the common data service as my connection, and I choose my environment from the common data service. Then the next stage, as we know, in finance and operations, there's tons of legal entities in glorious Contoso. So I choose the one I want from Contoso, GBSI, and I choose the uh, organization from CDS, which is aptly named Org775E707A. It's a great company. Everyone wants to work for it. So if we go back, we've got our integration of applications and legal entities. The next thing now is, what's that going to do? So we need to create a new project. So we're going to call this project Delete, but we should probably give it a more apt name if you're actually doing this live. Interesting. We're going to choose an existing connection set, which is the Scottish Summit. We're going to select OK. The next thing we need to do is choose a template. Now, tread carefully here. When templates first came out, they said they worked. I'll leave that there. Um, but what, if you're connecting finance and operations as your application in the connection set to customer engagement, you might be doing a field services, you might be doing a sales integration. So it would actually start saying, hey, we've actually got templates that will automatically sync the work orders to sales orders, et cetera, and do that for you with a little bit of love from the person that's actually selecting the template as well. So I'm going to choose FinOps to CDS because it's dynamically filtered the ones that I can choose from based on the applications that I'm integrating. Now I need to select the organizations. I only have one set, so it only gives me one set. And this is just saying, by the way, if you do this, you're actually going to be able to push data outside your organization. And that's just them, their way of making sure they don't get in trouble for anything. We've got our connection set. We've got our project. Now we need to start populating tasks. Remember to name these properly. Don't just name everything delete. It gets very confusing. So we need to add a task. Delete seems like a good name. Um, so what we need to do now, and what it's doing now, is actually going off to finance and operations, and it's bringing in all those data entities. You're going to love the user experience around that in just a moment. And then it's doing the same with the common data service. It's going off and it's going, here's all the entities from the common data service we can choose from. Now, this is the great part, because you would have thought, with all those data entities, you can easily search for something. <laughs> you can use a bit of control F occasionally, if you're lucky, but we we'll get there. Luckily, we're not going down to workers. Uh, so we just go into customers. Which version do we choose? Version two, version three? Oh, have I, no, have I gone too far? No. Have I? No, 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 no. There we go. Uh, you pipe down, Nish, out here. Troublemaker over there. So now we've got to choose the entity we just built, which was Dell customers. Sounds like something over only fools and horses. So let's go down. And there we go. So we want that entity speaking to that entity across those applications we chose with that organization. The reason why you choose your organization is you might have multiple legal entities that you're combining within that integration. Now we've done that. So we've created our application connection. We've created our project. We've created the task of the entities. But now we need to say what fields you want to map to what fields. So we're going to jump into this. And this is the easiest bit. So add mapping. Source field. I'm going to say it's going to be our customer account in finance and operations, and I want that mapped to the customer account in CDS. Then I'm going to add mapping. I want the name of the customer in FNO. Just started thinking about beer. It must be oh yeah, 20 to 4. To the one in CDS. And that's it. That's all we're going to need for my note. I've chose a very simple app in this case, but trust me, this can, you can grow this list out towards the end. We're going to save that. And that is the basic mappings done. I go back here. This is the nerve-wracking part. I'm going to run the project. I'm going to go back to my Dell customers inside the common data service. And at the moment, there's no records found. Always scary. But also, I need to change the view. This is how I view the information. And this is actually starting to move towards building a model-driven app, but we won't go too far down that rabbit hole. So I'm going to select customer account. I'm going to bring that across, and I'm going to save that, just so I can make sure I see that. I'm going to publish. Did I click Run Project? Yes. Right, and then I'm going to go back. And then from here, I'm actually going to go and see and hope that that data has come through. 
and it has. Okay, so what we're seeing here is a live integration from finance and operation that's moving data out of FNO into the CDS. So what we see is that will marry up to what is here. So we've done the data entity build out. We've actually integrated two applications together in reasonably quick time. The next stage now is actually building the Canvas app that we need. So, have you, have you all built Canvas apps? I can't remember if I asked that or not. No, we've got a lot of no's in the room. Start building Canvas apps, because they are phenomenal, which hopefully we'll start showing you today some of the functionality, and then I'll show you some more advanced ones that I've done. So, I'm gonna go to apps, I'm gonna go to new app, I'm gonna select Canvas. It's all rather exciting. From here, we're going to select what layout we want, whether we want a big tablet layout or a phone layout. In this case, we're going to want a phone layout. Oh, how are we doing for time? Okay. So it's going to turn into a bit of a hack now. Happy days. So I'm going to start, I'm even going to try and get a bit of UI into this as well. So I'm going to add an image file. Always dodgy to open images up when you've got a crowd of people in front of you. Uh, we're going to choose I am brew. I'm going to fill that. I'm going to add a button. So we go button onto the page. We're going to turn that into a square, and we are going to make sure the, it's filled in white. The text is in black. You see how easy this is to do? It's just a bit like Microsoft Word in regards to the feeling on how you change and format stuff. And we've made a bit of a round button there. And what I'm going to do is actually, I want the borders to be black. Now, it's automatically done some clever stuff for me there, saying, hey, actually, I'm going to take the color you've done elsewhere and just change it so it's slightly more transparent. But actually, I want it to be black. So I can take, type in native language. So I'm just gonna type in black, job done. I'm gonna then copy and paste that. So what I'm gonna need down here is the history, a history button. And then up here, I'm gonna want a plus button for new notes. And I wanna increase the size of the font there. So actually, let's just type in 80, happy days. And then I'm gonna copy that and put it down there for a bit later. And you'll figure out why in just a moment. And then let's turn that into a bit of a transparent button. Now from here, I'm gonna rename this. And the reason why I rename it, I don't do anything fancy with having things together or say SCR landing page or in one word because if someone who's visually impaired is using my app, this is what their visual impairment software will be reading. They will read that as landing page, not scr landing page, which used to be an old way of doing some naming conventions. Now from here, I'm gonna duplicate that screen and I'm then gonna duplicate it once more. I'm gonna change this one to uh, rename to new note. I'm gonna rename this one to history. Right, so now when I click this plus button, I'm gonna want it to navigate there. So what I do is type in navigate, IntelliSense kicks in, tells me what I'm actually wanting to say. I select new note and I can close that off. I can do transitions if I want, but not necessary from now with the time we've got. Navigate, and this one's gonna be history. I can close that off. So now if I click there, it takes me to new note, as you can see on the left-hand side, and I just need to delete these buttons. And the same with history. Let's just remove these. So I've started building the UI up. The next thing I need to do is actually get some of that data in. So I'm going to go over here to my data sources. This is a quite a new experience, but if you've not used Canvas app before, this might just look all the same to you anyway. I'm going to quickly search for an entity. So I need customers. Once that pops up, I'm going to need notes. So. Now I've got that, I need to do something that integrates FNO record passover parameters. We're going to cover that off in just a moment, but let's just crack on through this and then I'll talk through what that achieved. So I'm going to need this little code here. And it's, I've used this one, you can use different ones, but this is part of the documentation, so it'll be comfortable with you when you see it, if you look up how to integrate Canvas app into finance and operations when you look at the documents that Microsoft provide. Now what we need here, is something from finance and operations. If I go to the top right, it will say insert a Power App. And then it's gonna say input data for Power App. From here, I can say I want the account number. So to the right is the actual parameter that I want. And I can go and paste it. So uh, I, what I need to do though is, I don't know why I've done it on select, but it's right, I'll change that in a second. What I need to do is have that on app start. So we just paste that back in. Oh dear, that's all gone a bit wrong. Don't worry, it's easy to fix. Let's grab that again. Revision, revision, revision. And we go back, we paste that parameter in. Happy day. So now when I hit that, oh sorry, not that, this, run on start, it will actually have picked up that variable, customer table account number, which is all well and good. Let's quickly change that back to the navigate because I was silly and overwrit it. 
Now, that's, not, uh, that's all well and good right now, but that parameter, that variable, means nothing to us. So what I need to do is cancel this and actually manage to set that variable to something that means something. So if we go to this one, I grab that, and I say, actually, when I select this, set FinOps input to GBSI001. So when I hit this, the variable that was created from my on start is actually going to be set to something that means something to me, GBSI001. You're like, okay, well, that's well and good, but where's this going? Well, let's get there. If we do insert, we go to label. I drag this down. I go from label on properties. I make this so you can actually see it. We change this to white. Oh, where's that gone? Sorry. Put this down, change that to white. And then what I'm going to want to do is actually get that record in there. So I'm going to want a customer account and a customer name from the, na the customer I've selected in the finance and operations. So I'm going to choose lookup. Then I'm going to do uh, customers. I'm going to say whether well, customer account equals the FinOps input parameter. And then from that, just give me the customer account. So I just want to do that as a bit of a validation. Now let's see if it's going to go off to that CDS entity and pick that up. So it's done that. The next stage I'm going to want is the name itself. So I'm going to go back here and just quickly change that to name. Select that. And that should now start bringing in the name for me. Now that's brought in the name. The next thing I want to do is actually start inserting notes. So I'm going to go to insert, input. I'm going to do text input. That's the best way I can get some text to start creating notes from it. From here, I'm going to change the default, so default text, to actually a hint value. Insert customer note. I'm going to say there's a clear button. I'm going to allow the enablement of spell check. And I'm going to make it so you can actually have multi-line text. Now, from that, I am quite happy. What I need to now know, uh, have now is actually the ability to submit that. So I'm just going to copy a button, Control-C, Control-V. Go back down here. Keep that there. And I now need to start patching that back to the, to the CDS entity record. So from here, it's quite simple. I can say patch. And remember, we built, we built that entity for the notes. I'm going to do notes. And now I need to bring on some default columns so it knows what to look for. I go to notes. And what I need to start telling it now is the fields I wish it to populate. So from this, I'm going to say I want you to populate customer account. If you have any questions around why I'm doing it in this way, please uh, approach me afterwards or ask me during the questions. Uh, I'm going to want to bring in the, the customer account from here. So this property at the moment is label one. Bad naming conventions, but it will do for now. And then I can bring in all different properties. I'm going to have it so it tells me the color and patches the color across. I actually want the text across. Then I'm going to want to bring in customer name. Actually, it will be just name in this case. Remember what we did in the CDS. And I'm going to bring in label one underscore one dot text. And then the last thing we're going to need from here is actually the notes that have come across. So I'm going to type in notes. And then I'm going to have the text input box that we just put together, and I'm going to ask it to bring the text from there. So, yep, that looks pretty good. I'm going to play that now and just do test. And if I hit this, I'm expecting when I go back here and I go to my entities and I go to Dell Notes, that that now actually exists there. So we've got that straight away. That's actually passed through. So not only have we grabbed the customer in, we passed the record back to the CDS. Now, what I want to do now is actually, once I've done a note, I want that to reset ready for another note. So I can do text input one dot. Uh, actually, not, we don't need a dot there. We just want to reset the entire control. So now if I type in brilliant customer, a few exist, it will now reset that. So when I go back there, I can hit refresh. I can see that's coming up brilliant customer. And the last thing I might want to do for the user experience is once they've done a note, they might be ready. They might not want to do any more. So I'm going to say, actually, now navigate back to the home page, please. So now play that one last time. It now navigates back, and I'll be able to see that. So what I want to build out now quickly is the history. So we've got navigate. Yep, fantastic. So if I go to quickly put the navigation here, navigate to history. I hit this. Fantastic. By the way, when you hold down Alt, it puts you into preview experience. So you have to keep pushing play. I'm going to just bring in a gallery. First call. I'm actually going to quickly save this. Because last, when I built this before, uh, the Wi-Fi kicked out on me halfway through the demo, and everything was lost. And then I had to really go fast. It was quite, a, quite an interesting one. 
So let's save this to Power Apps. OK, fantastic. So what we need to do from here is galleries come in very many different flavors. You can have images, you can have just titles, titles, and subtitles, or you can build them out yourself. I just want the title and subtitle. I want to have some padding on here, which actually starts separating uh, the distance between the galleries. And then I want to actually start having it so you can see what the hell I'm doing. So I'm going to icons. I'm going to scroll down. Many different icons here at the box. The ones that we like are the ones where you can start building UIs. So I'm going to drag that there. I'm going to center back. I'm going to put this as white. And I'm just going to sort of give it a bit of transparency. Now from this, I'm just going to make it so this box is a bit bigger. And then I'm going to make it so the rectangle actually fills the whole space. Now what I need to do now is actually give it some data. So I'm going to want the notes coming in from the customer. So you can see that the notes we've entered are starting to sit there. But at the moment, it's giving me everything. I need to filter it so it's only bringing the customer notes that we are currently on. So I'm going to say customer account, uh, Dell notes, customer account equals FinOps input. So it's only going to pick up the customer that we're on notes. Now, we need to go further than that because I want to only see the notes that I put in last first. So I'm going to use a bit of sort by columns. Really basic stuff. If you're comfortable with Excel, then you'll be comfortable with this. I've already got the source. The column is going to be created on. And then I'm going to say descending, please. And then that's going to start populating that in a descending approach. Now, I would make that a little bit better, but we are really running out of time here. So what I'm going to do is uh, turn this into a back button. So when we're actually testing this on the app, it works. I'm going to then just use, instead of navigate, if you actually just want to go back, you can just type in back. And I'm going to copy that and put that on the new note page as well. And then now we can save and we can publish. Right, we're going to embed that in just a moment. I just want to quickly go back to the slides. Uh, we got somewhere like the below. I think I put in some delete functionality and I had a bit more time when I was at home. So, embedding the Canvas apps. The reason why we use the parameter function is a parameter is just the ability to pass a piece of content from one application to another. In this case, we're passing from finance and operations into the Canvas app. So all we're really saying here, the key part is set FinOps input param. Uh, actually, this part here, set FinOps input from the parameter piece, which is the actual Power Apps input. Now, what I'll do is, because we don't really have a ton of time to run through this, if you do have any questions, I'm happy to, to answer those at the end, or I can actually share an article that I have on this that really breaks it down. Now, where we get that information from was that input data for Power Apps. Now, what I'd like to quickly do is embed that now. So if I go to share, just to easily get to the app ID, I'm just going to cancel this, grab the app, and then go back to FinOps, insert a Power App. We're going to call this uh, Customer Notes, put the app ID in, and now we need to say which parameter we want to pass across. And then I'm going to set this as thin, although it doesn't really do much anymore that, because now the new responsive design has kicked in. But there is a certain amount of width with dialogue that it controls. Now we refresh that we should now be able to start actually using this Power App. So if I go to here, Customer Notes, it should pick up the fact that I'm on Action Bicycle Specialist, and we already have some notes from that. So if we go to History, it's picked up that. But you might go, well, well you might be smoke and mirroring this then because you've already just done it. So let's close out of that. Let's choose one that we haven't done, GBSI 006, and let's go Customer Notes. I really hope nothing comes up. History, gah. And actually, let's put something in. Uh, great customer. And hit plus, history, and it does come up. So that shows you, although it's not the greatest solution, I have only had about 15 minutes, so it does show you that you can actually easily create an accelerator, easily integrate your data. Now from that, if we carry on just for a moment longer, we embed via personalization. What you just saw there was actually just a method of personalization. You can embed it in many different ways. You can actually embed it on a fast tab. I love embedding on a fast tab. It looks so much more natural than having a big dialog box coming across. And I'll show you this app in a minute. You can have it look like it's just really part of the native finance and operations. You can embed it on the dialogue as we saw earlier. And what I also really like is you can embed it in the workspace. What I will say to you is that input data for Power Apps parameter, you don't get any if you start using it on the workspace or you get a limited amount. If you create a new workspace for this, you don't get any at all, so you have to then go down that technical. They are trying to make it easier, but it's very hard without using the, having that CDS functionality. We've only got the underlining SQL database and Ds at the moment. So 
I've already embedded it, so we'd have to do a quick demo on it. But what I will do is move on to the next bit, which is deployment. Now, there are a few flavors to this. I'm going to show one, but there's actually a couple more that have come out recently in the notes. Uh, if you've read through them or if you're aware of them, then you'll, you'll know what they are. I'll discuss them. So two stages here. And I always forget the first stage when demoing this. Share the app. That's why I highlight it, because I always forget. So I need to go and do that in just a moment. And then the second one is share the personalization. So this is assuming all security is in place. So we're assuming that the, per the person we're sharing the app with actually has access uh, to the FNO space that we're deploying it to and to the app itself. So I need to quickly type in Chris, happy days, share. You don't always have to collect co-owner, by the way. Only if he's going to be editing it too, don't, don't follow that. We're going to cancel that. And now what I need to do is go back to where I've embedded the app, which is here. And if we all remember personalizations, and I'm gonna, I will talk about why this isn't always uh, the, the best, um, I can quickly, if I do personalize here, personalize this form, I can export all my personalizations. So I click export, it's exported all the personalizations from that review into a nice XML that I can quickly import elsewhere. So if I close this and I go into the beautiful system administration model and I go to configurations, uh, personalization, sorry, from here, I can go and look for the user that I wish to roll this out to, and I can import a personalization from file. And then I can add to existing, never replace, because let's face it, FNO accountants and that are always really nice and calm when you remove all their personalizations. They don't mind at all. <laughs> so from here, we can choose the customer data default, do it open. And before we do that, I'm going to go to the uh, to Chris's browser. Google Profiles, phenomenal. From there, I'm just going to show you that he currently doesn't have a Power App, okay? Just so you know, it's nothing weird going on. If I do this, I select Add to Existing. All it's doing now is taking my personalization and importing it. You may have used this before, but and you may start thinking, this is really worrying that that's how we roll out Power Apps. But we'll come on to that in just a moment. Now I can ring up Chris and say, hey, mate, it's there now. You can start writing horrible things about your customers or beautiful things, depending on which way you go. From here, I can actually select Customer Notes. And as Chris, I can start using that. So really quick and easy to roll out, and a lot better than going into someone's computer and going, hey, Chris, do you mind if I enter an app ID a bit of a parameter? It's going to be happy and enjoy it. Accountants never have time. They're always so busy. So best we don't talk to them or go near them. You can just send them an email going, hey, it's deployed. Now, there are other ways of deploying, uh, it's, which I'll actually move on to in just a second. So perfect. So an example, who saw the LinkedIn post about Talent Grid? Did anyone see that? So there's three. Oh, I've got some fans. All right. <laughs> so one thing that I really do enjoy it is when, a, at the moment, I'm quite agnostic. I don't just work with finance and operations. I rarely get to touch it anymore, but I do enjoy touching it when I get a chance. Um, don't quote me on that one. Uh, but we did have a customer requirement. Uh, for Dynamics 365 for HR, but I built it in FNO. And it, they said, Will, we want to use the nine grid matrix. Now, who's heard of the nine grid matrix for talent management? Hey, we'd like to start. No. <laughs> so, what it does is when we, uh, you know, and this is quite classic, when we look at our employees, our workers, we will judge them on their performance only, but we don't always look at their potential. And a good job Hitachi actually does this, because when I started, my performance was shocking, but the potential was slightly there. So what the nine grid allows you to do is look at both aspects of that. So now I can look at a worker from here, and I can say, well, actually, their performance is really low, but their potential is high. I can apply this, and it will tell me whereabouts they are. People have different labels, different views, different information for that, but now I can see this from the way that we use it. We've got a potential gem on our hands. We really need to get them up and up on their performance so they can get to that high potential, then to that rising star where our future leaders sit. Now, this is just one really good example. And this is something that uh, Laurel Reitman, I ended up having a phone call with her. For those who don't know Laurel Reitman, she leads Dynamics 365 for HR. Admittedly, she had a phone call with me because I was using Dynamics 365 for finance and operations to build talent accelerators. She wasn't happy. But after that, we are good friends now, so it's fine. So this is just one example of many. I've done stuff for construction sites, for calculating of, 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 of posting accrued revenue and stuff that 
because I don't know if you've ever worked with construction, but they do things in a weird way over there. So from that, as we are running out of time, issues. So I do love painting a rosy picture of everything, but it's not always that way, and I don't trust anyone who says everything is perfect because we know it's not. So some of the issues. Data entities, we do need more. For those still using the finance and operations connectors to build out the Power Platform and Canvas Apps comp uh, components and functionality, you will hit blockers. <coughs> Unless you're technical, you will have to start asking for more data entities to be built. Integration can be complex to CDS. And like I said a few weeks ago, I've never had this product, product update in yellow. A lot of it were actually just issues, but we're moving uh, beyond that now. So we will know in October that this hopefully should be an issue anymore. I'm sure there'll be some teething problems, but there's a lot of testing going on currently. On top of that, and if you don't remember why, it's because CDS data, FNO and CDS is automatically going to sync to a point. Pass-through values, we need more. There's a lack of them. So we only can pass through one parameter at the moment. Luckily, they are now working on the ability to pass through two or more. So that will become uh, an issue of the past, but they haven't put a time on that. So maybe next time we uh, hopefully come see me again, I will have a bit more of an update there. And the initializations of flow using the business events framework is actually out of most functional consultants' hands due to our lack of knowledge around JSON. And even the word JSON payload, when I say that to functional consultants, they look at me like I've just spoke Arabic to them. So there's a slight issue there. However, it goes beyond that because we've been quite limited on the flows that we can use within finance and operations. But very pleased to announce, and you will see these in the release notes, that they are working on the ability to use instant flows, where you can trigger a flow from a selected record. Those who do know CE will go, well, yeah, we've had that for years. But this is different for us. This is, we're a bit behind on the FNO side, so this is exciting. On top of that, uh, Rollout. It can be a pain. So the personalizations, if we think what we use personalizations for, I was once in managed services. If you had an issue where everybody else's finance and operations area was working completely fine, but one person had an issue, you would clear their usage state. You would clear their personalizations. If you clear that, you could then clear all the power apps that have been embedded. If you're not privy to those power apps, you then have really, you, you know, they might be business critical, they might really need those. You've then created an issue. So doing it that way is a bit of a nightmare. There are new approaches to this now. So for those who know views and those that know full page forms that have been released, which are part of preview, you can activate it now, you can actually publish power apps and connect it to a security role. So it's not to a person, it's to a security role. Thus, as long as they have that security role, they'll always have that Canvas app. Very crucial, because until now it's been quite archaic. And the FNO connector, I told you about the issue of that in regards to the way that the filter is, that is a bug. But they're not going to work on it because of the aforementioned fact that we're going to start integrating using CDS more aggressively. So with time, it will be epic, and it is. I've said that for so long, and now a lot of those are actually getting updates coming in. So I wasn't lying because I was just assuming until then and hoping they had my back. So thank you so much. And we're probably running out of time because we've got the next session coming in. So if there are any questions, I'll be hanging around out there. So thank you so much.